Hey guys, welcome to the season finale of Kids Church at Home. No, I'm just kidding. This is our 29th Kids Church at Home, and it is our last Kids Church at Home. I promise you, uh, we will not leave it on a cliffhanger. Uh, we will conclude. No, I'm kidding. Um, but for those of you who have been watching every Sunday, uh, man, the world feels a lot different than when we started 29 uh, weeks ago doing this. Um, you know, back then I thought I would maybe do uh, three or four of these at the most. And uh, here we are uh, six months later and life has not returned to normal. But we're starting to do some things that feel kind of normal. Uh, but um, anyway, I'm excited for uh, hopefully life getting to... Maybe not be normal, but at least I can see some of you face to face or at least eye to eye. Um, but um, I thank you so much for watching these. I hope that for you and your family, you've enjoyed these. Um, you know, I, I, I um, have really loved getting to do these every Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss doing them. Uh, I'm kind of grateful to be able to do it in person instead of over video because it gets kind of lonely in the office. You know, I, I went from my office being in the middle of noisy uh, a noisy world. Uh, we have a school at our church, uh, and normally we would have camp all summer. And so for the last six months, it feels very quiet in here, and I don't like quiet. I like noise, especially the noise of children and small animals, um, and squeep. Although that's, uh, anyway, uh, I kind of like that. Um, but I am grateful that uh, you have been a part of watching these, and I hope that in some way during this kind of wild time, it's been something that's been uh, something to look forward to on Sunday. But more than anything, my hope is that these videos have in some way helped point you to Christ. You know, the reason that we do these Kids Church at Home videos is the same reason that we do our Kids Church at Church uh, every week. And Kids Church is really one thing that's very simple. And it's the reason why I'm a children's pastor and why I do what I do. I really want to see two things happen. I want to see kids come to Christ, that's become a Christian, and then I want to see them grow to become like Christ. And I hope in some way these videos have helped achieve, if not you coming to Christ, then at least you growing to become like Christ. This morning we're going to be looking at the life of Christ some more, uh, and the life of Christ was such a wonderful gift to us and uh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful opportunity we have to know about God through His Son. <clears throat> but we we'll want to get into our lesson in just a minute. We have some important things we need to get to. Uh, first of all, quick announcement: uh, starting this Sunday, uh, we began having Sunday school back on campus. Uh, so all of our teachers are back. We're so excited. I know that they have missed each one of you so much, Miss Diane and Miss Joyce and Miss Sherry and Miss Elise. I know they've missed you guys so much, and so they're so excited to get to come back. Also, we are moving Adventure Crew back on campus in November. It'll be on week 10 of your book. That's when you will say all of your review verses, and you'll get your brand new book for the next uh, semester. So that was going to be on uh, November, I think it's the 4th. It's the first Wednesday in November, and that'll be wrapping up book one that we kind of did at home, and then also getting ready for book number two which is going to be um, on uh, the nature center. So we're going to a nature center and we're going to learn about animals and how each one of them kind of show us a, a different character quality. They kind of, kind of live out this character quality that we as Christians are called to live out. We'll look at the character quality of taking initiative and we're going to learn about ants that, that work hard when no one asks them to that we can learn a lot from. We're going to be looking at an alligator. Uh, we're going to be looking at a wood tick. We're not going to touch them. Uh, we're going to be looking at a beaver. We're looking at a dog. All these different animals, and each one in a unique way shows us uh, a, a way, an attitude, a, a quality that we in our character are to have. Christ being the perfect example of that. So we don't want you to miss out on that. If you are doing this um, at, at home and you're not able to come back in yet, we will still happily mail you your book as well. So you don't have to be on campus to still do Adventure Crew. If you live somewhere else or you're, you're not ready to come back yet, that's totally fine. We will uh, we'll get you those in the mail as well. So we're excited about all the fun things we've got going on. Our Kingdom Kids videos are happening. We're starting to film them. I filmed three or four of the bells in our Little Kid Handbell Choir. 
so we got Ding Dong and uh, Dingaling already filmed, uh, and we're still waiting on Ring a Ding Ding to show up. So anyway, if you're doing our Kingdom Kids video, uh, don't forget uh, you should have gotten your script either in uh, either in by coming to Kids Church or coming and picking them up here at the office. Make sure you're watching your videos and practicing. And uh, we're really excited for the musical that we're going to be putting on this year. Well, before anything else, for the last time, here are our Kids Church rules with two of our favorites. Here is Squeep and Squop. Now we want to go to our big question. Uh, this is our question that we begin every lesson with. We have a new one for each month. We have a new one for October. So you're only going to get it today here on the video. But the question that we want to ask is this. What did Jesus do to save us? You know, we've been looking at the life of Christ over the last several months. That's kind of been the, the big thing that we've been talking about here at Kids Church at Home. We've been looking at miracles that Jesus performed. We looked at uh, parables that Jesus taught, also other things that Jesus taught as well. And we really see a lot of the heart of God through Jesus. You know, the Bible refers to Jesus as the Word of God. And to be honest with you, that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to us starting out, right? Because when we think of the Word of God, we normally think of the Bible. But the Bible and Jesus are not the same thing, although in a way they, they can uh, function in very similar ways. Think about this. Why do we use words? Why do we use words? Well, one of the reasons we use words is that it, it lets people know what we're thinking. Right? I can be thinking something, but unless I tell you what I'm thinking, you don't really know what's going on inside, if anything. So words tell us what we're thinking. Also, words sh tell us what to do. Right? Hey, go over there and do that. Hey, stop, slow down, sit down, be quiet. These are the things that I hear as a kid growing up. Uh, we use words to communicate emotion and love. Right? I, I could say, I could think I love my wife, but telling her I love her means a lot. You know, and so all those things are the things that words do, right? They communicate what someone's like, what they think. You can imagine it would be really hard to get to know someone if you never used words, right? Words help communicate all of those things. And in a way, that's what Jesus came to do for us. You see, Jesus being the Word of God, Jesus came to show us what God is like. Also, Jesus came to show us the way God thinks, he, he shows us what is important to God. He shows us what God cares about. He shows us what God loves, and he also helped us know what God hates, which we know is, is sin. And so Jesus being the word of God, it's not that he is like the letters of God. It means that Jesus came to do what words do. Words communicate what someone's thinking, what someone desires, what someone is like. That's what Jesus came to do. Jesus came so that when we see Jesus, we see a perfect reflection of God in a way that we are to be. We are to reflect the glory of God to the world around us. And Jesus came and he did that perfectly. And today we're going to see him do this in an incredible way. Today in our lesson, Jesus, who has spent the last three years of his life in the stories that we've been talking about, teaching, healing the sick, and in the lame and the blind, raising the dead to life. We saw that with Lazarus last week. But he didn't come just to do those things. All of these things had been leading up to one big moment, and that would be the death and crucifixion of Christ 
and ultimately the resurrection of Christ, where he would defeat not just death, but he would defeat sin. Well, today we are going to see Jesus riding in on a donkey. Normally we would talk about this story on Palm Sunday, which we did talk about many, many months ago on Palm Sunday. And we would wave our palm branches and sing songs and shout Hosanna. And though that song or that that story uh, a lot of times is reserved for the springtime when we celebrate Easter, it is a good reminder and it's a it's a good idea for us to 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 remember who Jesus is and what he's come to do. So let's take a look at our Bible story and let's see what Christ has come to do. Check this out. It was time to celebrate Passover, a special time to remember how God had freed his people from slavery in Egypt. Many Israelites had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate God's amazing rescue. Jesus and his disciples were among the people who traveled to Jerusalem. When they neared Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead into a village. As soon as you enter the village, Jesus told them, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on it. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. The disciples did as Jesus asked. As they untied the donkey, its owners asked why. The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their robes onto the donkey and helped Jesus get onto it. People spread their robes along the road for Jesus and others spread palm branches cut from the fields. The whole crowd praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Hosanna, they said. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The word Hosanna means save now. The people welcomed Jesus as their promised king. They hoped he would save them from the Romans. Some religious leaders asked Jesus to tell his disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, if they did not praise me, the rocks would praise me. While Jesus was in the temple complex, people who were blind and people who were lame came to him. Jesus healed them. The blind and lame would not have been allowed to worship in the temple. Other religious leaders saw Jesus' miracle and heard the children saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were very angry and asked Jesus, Do you hear what these children are saying? They were saying Jesus is the king. Yes, Jesus told them. The writer of the Psalms had said, You have prepared praise from the mouths of children and nursing infants. Jesus left them and went to the town of Bethany to spend the night. During Jesus' triumphal entry, the people welcomed him as king. Jesus was the Messiah spoken about by the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. One day, Jesus will return to earth on a white horse as king over everything. Jesus came to be our king. Now, he didn't come like a king. He came into this world and he was born to this young girl and and to her her husband to be Joseph. He was not born into a palace. He was born into a stable. He was not placed upon a throne. He was placed in a manger. And we see the people welcoming Jesus into town, riding on a donkey, laying their clothes down for him to to ride on, shouting, Hosanna, save us now. But many of these same people shouting Hosanna would very soon, within a few days, be shouting to crucify Jesus. You know, Jesus is the king, and the day would come when all the world will acknowledge that he is king. You know, in Philippians 2, we get an idea of what Jesus' life was like and what his mind was like and how he taught and how he thought. Paul says this in Philippians 2. He says, have this mind, like you think the way that, that Jesus had. Even though he was in the form of God, even though he was equal with God, he never used that to get what he wanted 
Instead, he made himself to be nothing. He became a servant. He obeyed God even to the point that he died on the cross. And then it says, And therefore God has given him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, the day will come when every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That day hasn't come yet. So we live in a world that does not acknowledge Jesus as King. But for us as Christians, we are to live in a way that acknowledges that with our life. That we live in this world where we know that we are part of the kingdom of God, and the one that we follow is the King himself. You know, we're in the middle of our country about to choose a new or not a new president, right? We've got two men wanting to be the president. One wants to be the new president. One wants to stay the president. And it gets very kind of crazy, and, and there's a lot of arguing and, and debating. But you know what? Presidents come and go. The king, King Jesus, he reigns forever. And for us as Christians, he is to reign within our hearts. And you know what? Another thing that Jesus did was that he showed us how to live with other people. And the way that we are to live with other people in this world is the way that Jesus taught us. And that was that Jesus cared deeply for them. You know, Jesus loved people, and he didn't love people that were always lovely. There were some people that I think Jesus probably had an easy time loving. I would imagine the Apostle John was easy to love. He, he, he cared deeply uh, for Jesus. He took care of Jesus' mother. I would imagine John would have been easy to love. But I would imagine there were other people, Pharisees, maybe even Peter at times, that were really hard to love. But Jesus gives us an example of how to love people. We get to love people by laying our life down for them. And you know, in our questions from kids today, we have a kid writing in a question asking about how we are to love people, how we are to welcome people, and how we are to treat them. And we can look at Jesus as the perfect example for that. Check this out. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for Questions from Kids. Sadie from Kilgore, Texas asks, My mom is inviting over some new neighbors. She wants me to make them feel welcome, but I'm not sure how. What can I do? Sadie, I think it's great that your mom is inviting new neighbors over. God puts us in our neighborhoods for a reason. He wants us to show the love of Christ to our, our neighbors around us. So it's a great opportunity for you and your family to do that. So what do you do when they show up? Well, first of all, it can kind of be intimidating with new people, and especially when they're adults, if they don't have any kids, uh, it might be a little bit challenging for you, but I wanna encourage you, uh, just be friendly. Start there. Start with saying hello, uh, looking them in the eye, asking them about themselves, where do they come from, what do they do. Just try to be friendly, try to be normal with them, try to, to show that you care about them. But there's something that you can do before that even happens, pray. Ask God to guide you and give you the right questions to ask or conversation. Pray that they feel welcome in your house. Uh, pray that you can just be an encouragement to them and pray that they can see Jesus through you and your family. Also ask God to guide you and direct you. If they are not believers, it's a great opportunity for you to express the gospel to them, uh, invite them to your church and so many other things you can do. So make sure that you just ask God to be with you and to help you in that process. Again, just be friendly with them, care about them, try to get to know them and trust God. He will bless your time. What a great thing your family's doing. So let me ask you a question. What are some ways you can make others feel welcome at your home, at school, or in your community? Our goal in life is to bring glory to God. We bring glory to God by living our life like Jesus, by living in a way that shows other people that we are committed to Christ, that Jesus is the King of our hearts. And so we are going to sing a song, and it talks about why we, why we live this life. It kind of uses the, the uh, illustration of, of a race that we are running. And Jesus is the one who is the example that shows us how we should live, how we should run the race that we are living. Would you sing the song with us? Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Thank you. 
One thing I do Forgetting what lies behind Straining forward to What lies ahead I press on I press on song it really sums up everything we've said this morning really perfectly it says this the word became flesh and dwelt among us you know that's what jesus is the word of god living that we can see you know it's one thing to read the words of the bible it's another thing to have the words of the bible lived out in front of us which is what jesus did would you sing the song as we celebrate this wonderful word of god made flesh in the person of jesus christ sing this with us And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father grace and truth, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth, truth. yeah. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Came flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. And we have seen his glory, glory. 
eyes of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, 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 full of grace and truth. And now for just the most faithful person ever, not really person because he's an animal, here is one more Argus's bad joke of the day with a very special Halloween themed joke for you. Thank you, Argus. Boo. Get it? Because it's a ghost joke. Boo. Never perform jokes for ghosts. They always boo. Well, now it is time for our Sunday showdown. Well, we uh, have some exciting game for you today. Uh, now, for many of you, uh, at the end of this month, uh, it will be Halloween, and many of you will be, I don't know if trick-or-treating is happening or not. I, as long as I get candy, I don't care how it gets to me. If I can't go to people's doors, they're more than welcome to come to my door and drop it off. What if we did that? Instead of you going around to people's doors, they just deliver the candy to you. I like it. This could be a new thing. Anyway, but this is very important. Uh, we all know candy. We love candy. Uh, I love candy. Uh, and I honestly would rather be eating candy right now. I will do it after this video is over. But we're going to play a little game that we're calling Know Your Candy. how this game is going to work. I am going to show you a picture of a candy bar. Unfortunately, it is unwrapped. It has no wrapper. It is just a candy bar all by itself. It's an unpeeled, it's just, it's peeled like a, like a little naked banana. You have to see if you can figure out what kind of candy bar it is just by identifying the bar. Now I will say, just to make it a little easier, we've sliced it down the middle and opened it up because a lot of them just look like long and brown, but when you get in the inside, you can see, does it have nougat? Does it have caramel? Does it have nuts? Does it have coconut? Throw that away. Those kind of things. So we're going to show you a picture of a cut open candy bar and then you have to decide which candy bar it is. Are you ready? Here is our first candy bar. We're going to start out nice and easy. Look at this guy. Break it into four pieces. Do you know what it is? Come on, give me a break. That's right, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. That's right, it is a Kit Kat bar. I love it. I love the fact that you can break it up and share, but I also love the fact that I can break it up and instead of sharing, eat all four pieces and feel like you're just kind of enjoying it yourself. So it's almost like you can break it up just so you can not share it and eat it all for yourself but I would never do that. Do you eat your candy bars in a weird way? Do you like peel them apart with layers? Like chew them, then flip them over, and then separate them? Kind of like an Oreo, but with like extra work. They got that outside chocolate around it that you gotta work your way through. Is that just me? Do you do that too? Let me know. All right, here is our next one, and uh, are you ready? This one's a little tricky. Look at this guy. We have a lot of action going on in there. That is quite a mixture of good things. What is this? Do you know? 
but you don't see these tons. You gotta go to like a really cool gas station to find these. These are called Reese's Fast Break. It almost makes it sound like it's an energy bar, but I'm pretty sure if you eat this, it's still just like eating straight up candy. But it makes you feel better about it, I guess. I don't know. Here's our next one. These are fantastic, and these are a mess. Whenever I eat these, I end up getting that caramel all over myself. And I don't hate it. These are one of my favorite candy bars. A little suggestion, put it in the fridge, let that caramel kind of harden up a little bit. If you put this in and you leave, you, you leave it in your car for a little bit and then eat it, it is just like, it's like eating a water balloon. It's just not pretty, but it's delicious. Have you ever had a candy bar that melted and you're like, what do I do? So you just cut the end off and eat it like a frosting packet? Just me? I should, really should eat some fruit. All right, here is the answer. It is the Caramello Bar. I love Caramello Bars. Mmm, so good. All right, here is our next one. This one's kind of an easy one. This one's my wife's favorite. She loves these. Check this out. No, don't adjust your TV screen. That chocolate is white chocolate. And it's got little something, little chunkies in there. What could this possibly be? This is great. This is, this is, this is, this is the kind of, uh, kind of candy bar design that I really, really like. Taking something that we all love, like taking an Oreo and dipping it in milk and then turning it into a chocolate bar. We're talking about Hershey's cookies and cream. This is a solid candy bar. All right, let's move on to the next one. If you have not gotten any of these, first of all, what's wrong with you? What do you do? You just like eat celery all day? Here's one that if you haven't gotten any, you're going to get this one. Are you ready? What is this? Not a lot of options going on here. I think this one's pretty easy. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is my number one candy bar. And honestly, it's not even really a bar because it's a cup. It's a candy cup. But that sounds weird. I'd still eat it. Here is the answer. It is obviously, it is Reese Cups. It is Reese Cups. All right. Now, uh, sticking with the uh, circular theme we have going on here, here is another circular candy. What is this guy? All right. Interesting. What is that? I'll give you a little hint. I always buy one of these at the counter whenever I go out to eat at a Mexican restaurant. And but in fact, when I finish eating Mexican food, my stomach is automatically trained to say, hey, make sure you give me one of those. It's like my mouth starts drooling, waiting for it. And the answer is the York Peppermint Patty. Apparently they make big ones, which I've never seen. I always get the small ones. I really like the green Andes mints that you get at the Olive Garden. I also can buy, you can buy them at the Cracker Barrel. Those are especially good, but the little round York Peppermint Patties, I like those a lot too. Here's the next one, and this is a candy bar that honestly, I don't think anyone actually likes. What is this? It looks like, well, I'm not even going to say what it looks like. It doesn't look that great. Do you know what it is? This is like, I've never seen a big one. These are, I've always seen these like in the mini bag of candy bars. Do you know what it is? It is the Mr. Good Bar. I don't know who Mr. Good Bar is, but his name should be Mr. Not That Great Bar. Because honestly, let's take the peanuts out of that. No one wants that. Peanut butter, that's what we want. Mr. Reese's, that guy is onto it. Mr. Good Bar... Uh, we only leave you in there so that we can fish our way through to get to the dark chocolate bar. You know what I'm talking about. All right, here's our next one. You don't see this much, but I like this one a lot. Check this out. It's got a little thin. It's got a little something in the middle. I'm going to give you a little hint. It's called toffee, and it's good. It's kind of salty and sweet, kind of like me. Do you know what it is? That is called a Heath bar. It's a Heath bar. It's so good. It's really, really good. I really like this a lot. All right, here is our next one, and uh, this one I think you're going to get. Check this out. Now, I will say, here's a little hint. What you're looking at is only half of the candy bar. Does that help give it away? That's right. This is the Twix bar. That way you can share it or pull the old Kit Kat move and eat both of them yourself. Or just hold on like this. All right, here is our next one. This one's classic. What is this? Look at that, we got some nougat, we got some caramel, and we have some nuts, but that's okay, we're gonna let them stay, because we're hungry. If you're hungry, pull out a Snicker bar. That's right, it is a Snickers bar. All right, here is our next one. This was my favorite candy bar as a kid. It's plain and simple, not a lot going on, but I like it, because it's a classic. Check this out, look at that. Nothing but nougat, that's not what it's called, but that's the ingredient, Not no caramel, no almonds, good heavens, thank goodness. No almonds in this, nothing crazy. Well, except for the name, 
Kind of a weird name. Don't even know where the name came from. Honestly, most of these things have weird names. Snickers? How is that a candy bar? Mr. Goodbar? Who is he? This one, named after the, uh, the book, The Three Musketeers, which makes absolutely no sense. It's like having a, a chocolate bar filled with jelly and calling it um, a, uh, I don't know, a Count of Monte Cristo bar. Makes no sense. All right, here is our next one. And uh, this one is, I think, what every kid pulls out of their Halloween bag and throws away because nobody likes these. Check this out. Look at that. It's got some lumps on top. Those lumps are kind of going to give you a little bit of a clue of what's going on here. Do you know what this is? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. This one has it. This is the Almond Joy. I don't know why they added the name Joy. It's almost as if they feel like they've got to convince you that you're going to enjoy it. So they put in the name. But let's be honest, nobody wants these. If someone gives you these on Halloween, you know that those people do not care for children. They might as well just go ahead and give out toothbrushes. All right, here is our last and final one. And this one is really, really great. This is a good candy bar. I feel really good about this one. Check this out. It looks like you've got some sort of Rice Krispie treat inside. Always good, especially for that nice little crunch and a little bit of caramel in it. Do you know what it's called? I can't remember what it's called. It's called a, um, oh, whatchamacallit. Uh, oh, it's a whatchamacallit. That's exactly right. I don't know about you, but I'm really hungry. And now I want to go eat chocolate. All right. Uh, we're going to do our missions moment. Uh, I'm going to go find some chocolate. Here's our missions moment for today. You know, uh, for our missions moment, we're going to meet someone who was really unique and special. Uh, you know, one of the things that COVID canceled, which I was most disappointed about, was the Olympics. I love the Olympics. I love watching sports that I do not care about for four years, except for two weeks in the summer. I really desperately care about pole vaulting and high diving and water polo and sumo wrestling. Let's be honest, it's pretty great. I love watching the Olympics and we didn't get to watch that. The nice thing is, is that next year we'll get the Summer Olympics and then we get the Winter Olympics right after that. So we gotta wait, but we'll get to it. Uh, but we're going to meet a missionary today who actually was in the Olympics. Now, you did not see this person run because he was born and died much long before you came around. But he was a, a, a young man who grew up on the mission field, became an Olympian, and returned to the mission field. Um, also, there's a really famous movie called Chariots of Fire that was uh, made about this man's life. And it was an incredible life because it was lived for the glory of God. So here is our mission moment for today. Check this out. Eric Little's family was from England, but he was born and raised in China. Eric was a missionary kid. His parents loved, served, and shared the gospel with people in China. Eric left China to go to school. There, he discovered he had a wonderful gift. God had made him very fast. He became a very good athlete. Eric even competed in the 1924 Olympics, where he won a gold medal for running. Eric may have been a gold medalist, but he had even bigger goals. Eric knew his athleticism was a gift, and it was very important to him for others to know all about the giver of good gifts, God. Eric eventually returned to China to tell the people there about God's greatest gift, his son, Jesus Christ. A war broke out in several countries which made life very difficult for foreigners living in China. Despite the hardships, Eric did not leave. In fact, Eric stayed in China until his death in 1945, but that was not the end of his ministry. Many Chinese who heard the gospel continued to share the good news they heard from Eric with others. Well, the question that we asked at the beginning of our lesson, our big picture question, it was this. What did Jesus do to save us? And the answer is Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. Jesus, the defeater of sin and of death, and what a wonderful 
What a wonderful one he is. What a wonderful king. May we live to his glory and honor. May we live so that others might come to know the name of Jesus. Well, now it is time for our last big review. I hope you're paying attention. Here it is. Man, thank you so much for watching all these videos with us. I miss you. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Next Sunday, if you're still not able to, to watch Kids Church or, or be at Kids Church in person, you can go back to episode number one. And there's a lot of really fun things uh, a long time ago that'll be fun to rewatch. I went, uh, I rode scooters with Pastor Rick. Uh, we hatched an egg with a with a, um, a a boing boing in it. Is that what it was called? Uh, I was interrupted many times by Squeep, uh, but lots of fun things and lots of great memories. Thank you so much for watching. I miss you all. I hope to see you soon, and take care. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>